If you've ever read the owner's manual to a cassette deck, you know there are two things it almost always tells you to do. One is to use a pencil to take up the slack in the tape, and the other is to not use tapes longer than 90 minutes in length. For example, in this owner's manual for a Pioneer cassette deck, it says because over the C90 tapes are very thin, they can easily jam in the pinch rollers and cap stand, and they often are subject to other problems such as irregular winding. And this owner's manual for a TIAC deck, it also says to use a pencil to take up the slack. And in their list of cassette tapes that you should not use, it says tapes that are longer than 90 minutes are very thin and stretch easily, so using them can result in wow and flutter. In addition, long tapes can become tangled in the equipment, so please use caution with them. Shouldn't that be, please use them with caution? And this owner's manual for a Panasonic stereo system. Again, it shows using a pencil to take up the slack, and it says, use only high quality tapes up to the length of C90. Do not use C120 or C180 tapes with this unit. This tape can easily become broken or stretched if not used with extreme care and may get tangled with the capstan shaft and rubber pressure roller. But if you've ever actually tried to wind a tape by sticking in a pencil straight like they show in those drawings, you know it doesn't work, it just spins. The preferred writing implement for winding a tape is a big crystal pen which fits and works perfectly. So the question is, if all these manuals are wrong about the pencil, are they also wrong about using tapes longer than 90 minutes? Are cassette tapes longer than 90 minutes really that bad? Let's give them a try and find out. Mix First of all, it is true that longer tapes are thinner. For example, I have two Maxell tapes here, and if you look into them, both the 90-minute cassette and the 120-minute cassette look like they have about the same amount of tape on the spool, which obviously means the tape in the 120-minute cassette is thinner than the tape in the 90-minute cassette. But there always have been variations in the thickness of tape. For example, I have two cheapo no-name 60-minute cassettes, and you can see a pretty drastic difference in the amount of tape on the spool on them. This one fills it up almost to the 30 mark on the gauge, while this one is only full to about 50 on the gauge. So that's about a 20% difference in the thickness of these two tapes. And the only tape I've ever seen that was badly stretched is this 90 minute cassette from around 1972. Notice it's so old, it calls it a tape cartridge. You can see right around there, I had to splice out a section of the tape that had become badly stretched. And that damage could have been due to the crudeness of the equipment that was in use back then, most of which only had a simple tension trigger auto stop mechanism for playback and recording, which would not stop the tape if it had become tangled in the pinch roller. But for the past 30 years or so, any halfway decent cassette mechanism has full auto stop that will stop the tape if it gets stuck. And these days, most people aren't playing cassettes in their car anymore, so they're not subject to the same extremes of temperature and humidity as they used to be. In addition to the stretching, snags, and snarls attributed to the use of longer, thinner tape, some users also report inferior audio reproduction with shortcomings such as increased print through and reduced output level. Print through is when the magnetism from one layer of tape wound onto the reel leaks onto the adjacent layers of tape on the reel, causing an unwanted echo effect. So to try to find out if it's really that bad to use cassette tapes longer than 90 minutes, I've assembled a collection of them. First is this Sony CD-IT 94 minute cassette. I'm not sure why they felt it was necessary to include four more minutes than a standard 90 minute cassette. This is a type 2 high bias tape. Next is this Maxell XL1 100 minute cassette. This is a standard bias type 1 tape. Then I have a Maxell UD2 CD 110 minute high bias tape. A TDK CD Power 110 minute high bias tape and then four 120 minute type 1 tapes. First is this Mexel, probably from the 1990s. This TDK from the 90s or early 2000s. This Sony from the late 1980s. And this Sony from the 1970s. 
as for my personal experience, I bought a bunch of these TDK CD Power 110 minute cassettes in the early 2000s and they've all worked perfectly well for me. Never had any problems with them and they all had very good sound quality. These used tape that was made in Japan and the cassette was assembled in the USA and they have a lifetime warranty. Also the owner's manual for this C-Crane Versacorder is a bit of an outlier because it actually recommends using Maxell 110 minute high bias tapes. It says they provide the best balance between maximum recording time and prolonged tape life. So I don't think tapes up to 110 minutes should cause any problems as long as you're using good quality properly maintained equipment and good quality tapes. So for the remainder of this video I'm going to focus on these 120 minute cassettes. The deck I'll be using for these tests is this Denon DRM24HX from around 1987. It is a three head deck which means when we're making a recording we can instantly monitor how the recording is turning out without needing to rewind and play it back again. It also has manually adjustable level and bias calibration controls to help optimize your recordings. It does not include a built-in test tone generator but I'll be using my computer to play test tones to calibrate the tapes. So here's a quick overview of how I calibrate a tape when I'm going to be making a recording on this deck. Put in the tape. I start playing a 400 Hertz audio tone to help me set the recording level. I adjust the input level to 0 dB. Now I switch over to tape, start recording, and I adjust this level until it matches 0 dB. So right about there. Now the level is properly set. We just had to turn it up a little bit for this tape. Now I switched over to a 10 kilohertz tone at minus 15 dB on the input level. And I select tape to hear how it's being recorded. You can see it's almost there, but it needs a little bit of adjustment to bring it solidly at minus 15 dB. So this tape needed slightly increased level and slightly reduced bias to be properly calibrated. Maybe a little bit more negative bias to make it stable where it should be. And now it's properly calibrated. The first 120 minute cassette I'm going to try is the oldest. I believe this is from the mid 1970s. It says capture the strength and delicacy of every sound made in Japan and claims to be low noise. On the back is the limited warranty, which was only 90 days, has the Philips compact cassette logo on it. The cassette has a semi see-through shell with a nice big label on it. Somebody recorded Spanish lessons in 1980 on this tape. The tape itself is a very odd, dull, brownish gray color. It's not the typical chocolate brown of ferric oxide tapes. Now I'll try to do the same calibration on this Sony tape from the 1970s. This predates the IEC Type 1 standard that this deck was designed for, so I won't be surprised if I'm unable to calibrate it properly. But I'll give it a shot anyway. Right now I have that 400 hertz tone playing in the input, so I'll start recording. And it's coming through at minus 5 dB, so we have to increase our level and we're not quite getting to 0 dB. We're only getting minus 3 out of it even if the level turned all the way up. So that's the loss of output level we're experiencing with this tape. Now let's try to calibrate the bias. We have it set to minus 15 dB and it needs a little bit more negative bias. Hey look at that. We were able to calibrate the bias so this might have a fair shot at making a decent recording. First Missouri State Bank, where first means more. Yeah. Our experience sets us apart. It's what you're looking for. Mm. We're committed to community and to you. The difference shows in all we do. Where first means more. First Missouri State Bank. First Missouri State Bank. Where first means more. Yeah. Our experience sets us 
it's a part, it's what you're looking for. Mm. We're committed to community and to you. The difference shows in all we do. We're first means more. First Missouri State Bank. That actually sounded a lot better than I expected. Yes, there were some dropouts, but you gotta cut it some slack, no pun intended, because the tape is at least 45 years old, but it actually sounded pretty good. Next is another Sony 120 minute cassette, but this is from around the late 1980s. It's their HF Type 1 normal bias tape. So let's give this a try. There's my level calibration tone playing. And it's going to need a little bit more level. Right around there is properly calibrated on the level. Now calibrating the bias at minus 15 dB. And that's perfect. So no bias adjustment was necessary. We just had to increase the level a little bit. Don't let fire fool you. Keep Idaho green. This Idaho was made for you at Create your space, defend your place, wildfires stop with you, it's our responsibility, keep Idaho green. We're on the same team, Team Idaho, think before you strike, it's easy don't you know. Keep your cool when things get hot, we won't get burned, we can all do our part if we learn. Don't give an old flame a new game It's up to you and me Don't let fire fool you Keep Idaho green Don't let fire fool you Keep Idaho green Perfect! Sounds as good as I could ever expect from a Type 1 tape. Next is this TDK D120 tape from sometime in the late 90s or early 2000s. I believe this was the last generation of TDK D tapes, at least for North America. I have the original wrapper for the 90 minute version so we can see what it says. Claims to be superior normal bias for everyday recording has the Play It Loud logo on it. And it has this fancy 3D graph attempting to show how good it is for portable recorders, boomboxes, Walkmans, and car stereos. as a limited lifetime warranty. The tape was made in Korea. The cassette was assembled in Thailand. Claims to have 60 dB dynamic spectral output, at least for the 90 minute version. You can see the tape is so thin it's partially see-through, but that's actually pretty common for more modern cassette tapes, even in the shorter lengths. It's a very dark brown color, so it probably has some cobalt in the mix, instead of just plain ferric oxide. So now let's try to calibrate it. Here's my calibration tone playing at 0 dB. Again, we have to increase the level a little bit. There it is at 0 dB, so the level's now perfect. And just like that Sony HF tape from the 1980s, no bias adjustment is necessary. It's perfectly at minus 15 dB with the control centered. The Eye Institute of Southern Arizona We put the world in view, our focus is you That was another fine recording on this TDK D120 tape. Sounded just fine.
no complaints at all. Finally, this is the Mexel UR Normal Bias Tape. Great for everyday recording, or if they're a famous man in the chair. The usual, sir. Please. Even after 500 plays, our high fidelity tape still delivers high fidelity. <laughs> Again, it has a full lifetime warranty, great for everyday recording, voice, lectures, all broadcast sources, and pre-recorded cassettes. Excellent for portable components, portables, portable systems, and car stereo systems. This was assembled in Korea with Japan and US components. So let's unwrap it live on camera. I know some people are going to complain because I'm not trying to save the wrapper, but Whatever, it's a Mexel UR tape. These are not exactly valuable tapes. It's not like some tapes where it's worth $50 in the wrapper and $10 once you take it out of the wrapper. There you go, standard Mexel UR Type 1 120 minute tape. Again, the tape is a very dark brown, slightly transparent, but maybe not quite as transparent as that TDK tape. So let's try to calibrate it. There's our input level at 0 dB. Again, we have to raise the level a little bit. About the same as that TDK tape. So now that's perfect. And again, the bias is perfect. No need to adjust it. And for this test recording, I'll be using Dolby B noise reduction. Mix 107.3 Jam presents Digital Mix. Digital Mix. The first package that's truly designed for the digital frequency identifiers of the 90s. Mix 107.3. Here's Lauren Palagi, Program Director of Washington's Mix 107.3. Well, there were several reasons we asked Jam to produce a new custom jingle package for us here at Mix 107.3 in Washington. First, we didn't want to force the name of our station into an existing package, which really was designed for something a lot shorter. Our name is far too important to be rushed over, so by creating the digital mix package, we could sing our digital frequency, decimal point and all, comfortably. We also wanted to create a catchy melody for the words Mix 107.3 and to reinforce that melody in the music tracks. Jam did exactly that. Another perfect recording, no problems at all. Sounded as good as any other Type 1 tape I've ever heard. So, are all these longer than 90 minute cassette tapes really bad enough to justify all the warnings not to use them? I don't think so. I think when used on good quality equipment and with proper care, they're perfectly fine. I wouldn't go out of my way to buy them, especially not at eBay prices, but if you happen to come across some of these at a thrift store or garage sale or whatever, I think they're worth giving a try, especially if you want to make an extra long mixtape. And like I mentioned, I've always had excellent results using these 110 minute high bias tapes, so if you happen to come across any of these at a reasonable price, definitely pick them up. This thematic minute-long instrumental bed can be used for traffic reports, promos, or other station features. And YouTube end screens. 